Marco Di Bueno is the research director of the Heart and Stroke Foundation of Ontario. He showed us how to properly use an automated external defibrillator. Automated external defibrillators are an extremely important tool to help increase survival rates from cardiac arrest. In fact, the use of automated external defibrillators can increase survival up to 75% in individuals who have collapsed and suffered a cardiac arrest. Obviously, the first thing you want to do when something happens like this is call 911 to get emergency medical services staff on site as quickly as possible. But these are very intuitive devices that are simple to use. All you need to do is bring them into the site of the, the individual's cardiac arrest, turn the unit on, and it will actually prompt you about what to do next. It will tell you to check for breath, check for pulse, it will tell you to start CPR, and it will tell you to attach the pads to the individual's chest. Obviously, at this point, you need to remove the person's clothing so that you can stick the pads to the person's chest. The pads themselves indicate diagrammatically where the, they need to be attached and in what way. They simply then get pushed onto the individual. The machine then continues to prompt you. It senses a heartbeat or it senses no heartbeat in the case of a full-on cardiac arrest, and it tells you what to do next. Ultimately, it will say to step back and discharge an electric current to the individual. At that point, all you do is step back and let the machine do its own thing all by itself. It will send an electrical circuit to the individual trying to restart its heart. And if it's successful, it will tell you to stop. If it's not successful, it will tell you to continue with CPR while it recharges until it sends another shock to the individual. It's as simple as that, voice prompted, telecommand, no need to really intervene. And there's no chance that you will get shocked or hurt nor that the individual will be, will be given an electric charge if they don't need it. Dibono also showed us what happens from the moment you turn on the device to the very end when you're delivering CPR. Unit, okay, stay calm. Check responsiveness. Call for help. Stay calm. Check responsiveness. Call for help. Open airway. Check breathing. Give two breaths. Attach defib pads to patient's bare chest. Don't touch patient. Analyzing. Shock advised. Don't touch patient. Press flashing shock button. Don't touch patient. Press flashing shock button. Shock delivered. Start CPR. He also spoke with us about how to properly maintain the device. Maintenance of automated external defibrillators is very, very straightforward. In fact, for private entities, uh, private employers, there are organizations called FADOs which can be recruited to provide the maintenance and training services required to train all staff and to do the regular maintenance of the units. But essentially we're talking about making sure that the battery is still functional and that gets replaced uh, on a pre-specified, every pre uh, determined uh, on a predetermined scale uh, that the pads are replaced as needed after use obviously but also on a regular basis to make sure that the adhesive is still working and that any of the other material in the kit so gloves uh, masks for the CPR administration uh, alcohol pads and, and any other kind of uh, disinfectant material that comes with the kit and also to just test that the unit is still functioning properly and that's done on a regular basis as well by the service providers. That's essentially what an employer needs to think about. Obviously these units need to be kept in an open space that are accessible to all individuals in an employer's um, in, uh, organization so that it can be deployed as quickly as possible but maintenance, maintenance really should be left to the hands of the professional organizations that know how to do this.